Now, not only does the HoloLens 2 recognize me, it also recognizes my hands. Look at this, fully articulated hand tracking. And as I move my hands around, the HoloLens 2 is actually calibrating to my unique hand size. And of course, not only does the HoloLens 2 recognize me and my hands, it also recognizes the world. Welcome to my mixed reality home. This is the place where I have all the apps and content that I use every day. Let's check some of them out. Now, I've seen many people put on HoloLens for the first time, and the first thing people do when they put on the device is they reach out their hands and try and touch the holograms. And now, you can. Look at the way that the holograms are spawning to my hand, almost inviting me to touch it. And in fact, I can just grab this corner to resize it. Or I can rotate it, or move it. That's right. We are touching holograms. This is an app I've got called Spatial. Let me just put it right there. I've got another app here called Vuforia View. Now, it's a little big, so let me just use two hands here to make it smaller, and then rotate it so you can see. There we go. And then let me put it down here in your spatial, maybe make it a bit smaller. Yeah, that's nice. All right, now let's switch gears and talk about a different kind of application. I've got a browser over there, but it's kind of far away, and I don't really want to walk over there, so let me just call it over with my voice. Follow me. This is a browser that's running Microsoft Teams, which is a tool that we use back home to collaborate. Let me see what the team's been working on. OK, it looks like they've got a surprise for me in the Playground app. I just have to say the words show surprise. All right, so let me just open up that Start menu here, and then place the app, and then launch it. So now we're actually exiting my mixed reality home and going into an immersive experience. But notice that that browser that I had actually followed me in. Now this can actually be really useful when you have things like emails or PDFs that you need to reference while you're doing your work. I don't really want it following me around, though, while I'm showing you all this cool stuff. So let me just put it over here, and then we'll get back to it later. Welcome to the playground. We spent years exploring and refining interactions for HoloLens 2. And the playground is just a tiny sampling of the many prototypes that we built, tested, and learned from. Our approach was basically to try out as many things as we could and look for the things that stood out. So for example, here I've got three sliders. Each of them is controlling this wind farm simulation, but each in a different way, using a different interaction technique. One of the things we tried is this touch slider here. So here I can just stick my finger in the slider and have it go to a particular value to control that wind speed there. It felt OK. We also tried this push slider. So this guy can kind of nudge from side to side, kind of like an abacus, which was interesting. Now, the interaction that really took home the cake, though, was this pinch slider. The way that works is you just pinch it and move it wherever you want. And what we found was that people really liked that tactile sensation of their fingers touching as they grabbed and then released. And across the board, for all interactions, the audio and visual feedback as you grab, move, and then release were all really critical for making this experience feel connected. Oh, this is just so satisfying. I can't wait for you all to try this out. All right, now let's move on to a different kind of control, buttons. How do you press buttons on HoloLens 2? Well, you just reach out and press them. Now, one interesting thing that we found about buttons was that the size of the buttons actually impacted the way that people interacted with them. So for example, for the smaller one, most people would use one or maybe two fingers, but for the larger one, pretty much everyone used their entire hand. And this is kind of interesting when you think about it because these objects don't really weigh anything. They're just digital things. But despite that, people would treat them like real things, almost as if the bigger one had more weight. I just love the way these move and the sounds they play when I press them. It's great. All right, how about something that uses all 10 fingers? Well, to test that out, we built a piano. So here I can just play a chord, or I can play the keys one at a time. All right, so where's that surprise that the team had for me? Oh, that's right, I had to say those words. Uh, show surprise. Ooh, look at that hummingbird over there, it's gorgeous. I wonder if it will fly to my hand. Yeah, oh wow, this is beautiful. I just love the way that it's following my hand around. I've gotta tell the team, they've done a great job. And in fact, I don't even need to use my hands to do this because I can use my eyes and my voice. 
That's right, HoloLens 2 has eye tracking. So I could just look over to this browser here and look at the bottom of the screen to scroll it, and then send my message. Start dictation. The hummingbird looks great, exclamation mark. Send. So this is what we mean by instinctual interaction. By combining our hands, our eyes, and our voice, HoloLens 2 works in a more human way. I want to thank the team back home in Redmond and across the world for all of their incredible work to making this dream a reality. And I'm sure that I speak on behalf of all of us when I say that we can't wait for you, the world, to experience this for yourself. And we really can't wait to see what you create with HoloLens 2. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. That was incredible.